Yo guys, it's James. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the topic you've all been waiting for. I've been asked so many times for this one. So we're gonna talk about how do you get six pack abs, okay? Because let's be honest, as a man, you should have a six pack. Are you even a real man if you don't have a six pack? It's debatable, it's debatable to be honest. All I know for certain is that having a six pack does not hurt any area of your life, it only improves it. There are only benefits to having a six pack. Every man should have one. And if you don't have a six pack right now, fear not because this video is gonna go into absolutely everything you need to know to get a six pack, all right? Because it took me years to figure this stuff out. And this is a video that I wish I could just give my younger self because it would have saved me so much time and energy and effort and just, you know, wasted kind of worry uh, just thinking about all this, okay? So there's three factors to consider. We're gonna go through them all. I'm just gonna lay it out, make it very nice and simple for how you can get a six pack. Now the title, how to get a six pack in 30 days. I know some of you clicked on it just because it says in 30 days. Now, if you are at 20% body fat or lower, you can definitely get a six pack in 30 days, okay? You could just do a calorie deficit of 500 calories uh, and you could hit it hard for 30 days and you will have a six pack. Like 80% of you would probably have a six pack within 30 days if you were to do that. But some of you are gonna be starting at a higher body fat percentage. And for those of you who are at a higher body fat percentage, it's probably gonna be unlikely that you're gonna get a six pack in 30 days. So the first point that I really wanna talk about and I really wanna try and change is your mindset, okay? Because nothing good happens in 30 days. Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, your life will not be built in uh, 30 days either. You know, it takes time. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. And that's what I want you to understand is that anything worth having takes a long time. The reason having a six pack is so valuable is because most people don't have it. And most people don't have it is because it takes discipline and consistency over the long term. Okay, so what I want you to think about is why do you want six pack caps? because everyone has you know their reasons and you need to get super super clear on your reason why why do you want six pack abs why is this goal important to you because if it's just some superficial reason if it's just because oh you know you're going away on holiday and you, you know you want to get more attention from girls or whatever fine that's good but is that going to be enough to motivate you when it when the going gets tough because there's going to be times where you're going out with friends or you know you're with your girl or whatever and you've got to make a decision between eating the pizza and eating uh you know the the, the safer option the, the chicken and rice or whatever right and you've got to decide there and then what's more important to you is a six pack more important to you or is that 30 minutes of pleasure that you're going to get from that meal more important to you so if you get clear on the reason why you want a six pack everything else i'm about to talk about is going to be so much easier if you have a strong why alone you'll figure the rest out anyway you, you'll just figure it out because you just desire it enough so if you if you get super clear on why you want a six pack it's going to make everything else easier okay so that's the mindset uh sort of topic covered the next thing to consider is nutrition all right so the reason people have visible abs is because their body fat is at a low percentage uh, you can train them to make them more visible but really it just comes that comes down to body fat levels and the biggest factor that influences your body fat levels is your nutrition okay so we couldn't we can't make a video about six pack abs without talking about nutrition now for some of you if you're just getting started with your training I'd say if you're within like a one or two years, you're probably gonna have to like bulk up a little bit first. Sorry, I got flies annoying me. You're gonna have to bulk up a little bit. Um, you're gonna have to add mass because that's gonna raise your metabolism and then it's gonna be easier for you to cut away at the body fat, okay? Because the more muscle you have, uh, the more uh, calories you burn at rest, which is your BMR, and the easier it is to get lean. 
So that is definitely a factor to consider as well. If you're already super, super skinny and you don't have visible abs, personally, I would bulk up first. I would just spend a year or two years bulking up uh, um, or at least gaining some muscle tissue because it's going to make it so much easier for you to then try and cut away and get those visible abs, all right? But specifically with nutrition, most important factor to consider is obviously a calorie deficit. You need to be in a calorie deficit in order to see, eventually see your abs. There is no other way around it, all right? But how much of a calorie deficit, because this is what people get wrong a lot, actually, is you wanna be, uh, I would say, anywhere between 300 to 500 calories. Definitely no more than the 500 calorie deficit, okay? 500 is on the extreme end, 300 is on the more of the reasonable end and if you get super lean the, the leaner you get the harder it becomes okay so then you, you your deficit might have to be less okay like now i'm at the point where i'm in a deficit and i just feel like crap to be honest like uh, i i'm struggling to push it any further without it affecting my ability to work and uh, my effect affecting my training sessions and just everything else like it becomes it gets to a certain point where <clears throat> The benefits of getting leaner just don't outweigh the costs. But for most of you, you're not going to be in that position right now. But you want to, whatever you decide to do, you need to make sure it's sustainable, all right? Because <clears throat> it's a marathon, not a sprint. The person who does this for a year versus the person who does everything perfect for a month is always going to win, okay? It's a marathon, not a sprint. So you, whatever. Uh, calorie deficit you go for you need to make sure it's sustainable so 300 calorie deficit how you can work out your maintenance calories is uh, there's trackers online if you google calorie calculator you put in your height your weight uh, a few other activity levels and it will give you a rough estimate of how many calories you will need to maintain your current body fat uh, current uh, body weight okay and then what you would do is you would minus 300 off that number. So let's say it's 2,500 calories. So you would minus 300 calories, which is your deficit that you're shooting for. That means you've got 2,200 calories to play with. Okay. Then to calculate your macros from that, what you do is you work out, first of all, your protein, which should be one gram per pound of body weight. Okay. One gram per pound of body weight. You work out your protein. And then your fats should be 0.3 grams per pound of body weight, okay? 0.3 grams per pound of body weight for your fats. And then the rest of the calories that you have uh, remaining, you just fill it up with carbs, okay? And that's how many carbs you've got to play with. And over time, you will gradually need to like kind of, uh, you're gonna plateau at a certain point and then you might need to reduce your calories slightly, uh, you know, say maybe every three weeks or something like that every two or three weeks. But the biggest mistake people make is they go too hard, too fast, okay? And it's a bit like if you set off uh, running a marathon, but you set off at like a 100 meter pace, you're just gonna burn out, you're just gonna get tired, and you're just not even gonna finish the race. And that's the sad reality of most people's experience in the gym is they just go too hard, too fast. So really, uh, you just want to take this slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. You know about the uh, the story between the tortoise and the hare? Be a tortoise, guys, okay? That is the way you're going to get lean. That is the way you're going to get a six-pack. And a good goal to have is one pound per week fat, uh, weight loss, okay? One pound per week, okay? If it's more than that, and you're, you have a lot of body fat, say if you're above like 25% body fat or, or, or higher, okay, that's fine. But the, the lower your body fat percentage is, the harder it's going to be to lose one, one pound per week. If, for myself right now, to try and lose one pound per week, it's, it's, it's pretty difficult, to be honest. Okay, but for most of you, a good goal to have will be one pound pound per week okay and like I said the leaner you are the harder it's gonna get uh, one thing that you can do is if you've been in a calorie deficit for quite a while and it seems like you've plateaued before you reduce your calories what you can actually do is a refeed day where you can just eat a day where um, you would just eat maintenance calories or in a, 
in a surplus. And the leaner you are, the more frequent you have to do this. But chances are, if you're watching this video, you don't need to do a refeed too frequently. I would say, you know, maybe once every two or three weeks maximum, to be honest. Uh, don't go crazy on the refeed. Uh, but what you will notice is if you've hit a plateau for a while, before you reduce your calories some more, because you can only reduce your calories so much before you really start to run yourself into the ground, what you can do first of all is try a refeed. And the whole goal with reducing your calories over time is the same with progressive overload in the gym. So progressive overload states that over time you gradually want to increase the amount of weights that you're lifting you gradually want to make it harder because your body adapts, it grows stronger, and you need to continually apply uh, a, a harder stimulus for your muscle to grow stronger. It's the same with fat loss, but we want to do this slowly. If you go straight into a thousand calorie deficit, well, you're going to lose quite a bit of fat loss at the very beginning, but then you're going to hit a plateau. And then what are you going to do? You reduce it even more, but you, you've already reduced your calories by a thousand. Do you know what I mean? So you're making it so much harder for yourself. So the way to win this game is to play the long game. I've, I've made a video about this before, but it really is a marathon, not a sprint. And you want to make small, small adjustments over time. The slower you lose uh, the body fat, the longer it will stay off you and the more sustainable, more sustainable it will be and the easier it will be for you. Okay. Um, so how do you know if you're going on the right track okay so there's two metrics that you want to look at you want to take progress photos every single week uh, front side and rear you want to take progress photos same time same lighting same place every single week and the other thing you want to do is you want to weigh yourself. Now, every single morning, guys, when you wake up, after you've been to the toilet, before you drink anything, you should weigh yourself every single morning. And uh, after a, a week, you can just divide, you can total up and get the average, okay? And ideally, you want to see this average trend trending down at a pound per week, guys, all right? Don't always rely on the scale because, uh, you know weight can fluctuate and what's more important is uh, you know the visible changes that are going on in the mirror but definitely take progress put photos every single week that is going to allow you to uh, just see if you're on the right track all right uh, and the final big factor to consider is obviously the training now to be honest with the right mindset and the right nutrition alone um, you can get six pack abs for sure but if you train them, it's gonna, first of all, you know, your six pack will look more uh, defined, but also it just make it easier for you to, to get a six pack in the first place. So definitely train your abs, train them like any other muscle group, to be honest. Uh, I'm a big fan of training almost everything twice per week, if you can. Some of my favorite exercises included the hanging leg raise. Uh, yeah, basically, there's two type of exercises that you absolutely must do. You can add more in if you want, but I would say these are the foundational, these are the non-negotiables. You need some kind of leg raise, which is gonna work like the lower portion of your abs, and then you want some kind of crunch, okay? When you're doing the crunch or the leg raise, it's really important that when you contract, you breathe out. You breathe it all the way out and really feel that contraction, contract it hard. And then slowly, don't just um, don't just throw your legs down. Gradually, let your legs uh, come down and really feel the eccentric portion of the movement. I'll do some more I'll do some more videos in future about exercise execution and stuff like that. But um, they're the two two main exercises that you should should be doing. With regards to cardio, uh, to be honest, I don't do any cardio at the minute apart from daily walks. Uh, I would definitely recommend doing some form of cardio or if, you, if you're not doing any cardio, definitely do some daily walks. Every single day, if you get 10,000 or 12,000 steps in, ideally if you can do it outside and get in nature as well, that's going to make it uh, so much easier for you to get a six pack in the first place. Okay. 
So that's your training done with your nutrition. Like I said, uh, one point that I did miss is whole foods. Stick to whole foods. Don't eat processed foods. Don't eat crap. If you stick to whole foods, it's going to be so much easier for you to maintain a calorie deficit, okay? And if you do that with your training and your nutrition and you have the right mindset, okay, look, it is impossible that eventually you will get a six pack, okay? If you do the right actions for a long enough time period, it's impossible for you to not get a six pack. But most people, they just can't stick it out long enough. For most people, the temptation of the cookies, the ice cream, the pizza, the pasta, whatever, just becomes too much for them to handle. And they choose that rather than having a six pack abs. Now, if you do everything right, 80%, 90% of the time, you can still enjoy those foods, okay? You don't have to be a complete savage and just never have those foods ever again. It is possible if you do everything correctly most of the time to still enjoy those foods as well. If you want some help with this, you want someone to work with you one-on-one -on -one to figure out you know, the best training routine for you, nutrition and just overall uh, health and lifestyle optimi optimizations to get you looking and feeling better than ever before to get you in the best shape of your life you can head to jamesweetland.com for coaching and other than that guys thank you very much for watching and i'll talk to you soon